Om, 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 Om. Namaste, welcome everyone. Big family I have in front of me. Thank you. What a wonderful opportunity to to meet like this. Already is almost good enough. Thank you, and good to see you all, wherever you may be, in India or anywhere else on this planet. But, and you know, it is wonderful because um, seeing each one like this, it matters not where your physical form is located right now. Right now, we are simply here. I am very grateful for this opportunity. You may see my eyes drifting around like this, but I'm just trying to take it all in. <laughs> ah. Hmm. How wonderful. And I better not start calling names because then the whole satsang will be our names. Hmm. Uh. Hmm? Some people are joining in. Sometimes I might have these dialogues, you might see on the offside, talking with the team, they are here. They are saying some people will be joining in as we go. It's good, good. It's good, good. Mm. So wonderful. Mm-hmm. How can I not be smiling and happy? Who am I looking at? Huh? Who am I looking at? To see. <laughs> ah, so good, so good, so good. Mm-hmm. So, so good, so happy.
I've already got hands, uh, these yellow gloves on already. I don't know how we can have you got pre prepared questions. What to do? Okay. And uh, <coughs> mm. where will I start? Let me start with uh, Prashanti. Yes, you. Yes, very good. Get some sound. No? Uh, mm-hmm. First of all, I just want to check that um, uh, reception is good in terms of audio for everyone. You can just put a little hand up. We are good. You can hear. Good ah, yeah, 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 it's good. Hi, darling. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm. you so much. For yeah. This is my mother. I know. Yeah. Uh, to be with the sun. Ah, yes, yes, I can see. And I will stay. Ah, this is sister, no? As well. Yes, yeah, no? sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Namaste. Ah, Namaste, Ji. Yeah, very Thank good. Thank you so much. Ah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, very good. Hmm. This is Papa and Mama. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, Namaste. Namaskar. So whoa, whoa, another one there. Uh, very good. Namaste. Uh, yes, yes, darling. Mm. Mm. You have no questions. My first question has no questions. Is it a good sign or not? <laughs> I am still very, very happy. Mm-hmm. Ah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I am very happy to see your family in there. You see? Yeah. Same, same, same. I am very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that we all could have your darshan. Ah. Oh. Good to see you all. Thank Good. You. Bless, bless, bless. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, darling. Thank you. Good, good. Uh, uh, I see some yellow hands. Can I see some real hand? A real hand who will want to speak right now? And Real hand. Okay, who is ready there? No? Okay. Uh, let me see you now who wants to say. Um, okay, Gotam, can I speak with you for a moment? Hmm. Hold on, we're just um, linking you up for sound. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you hear me? I can very clearly hear you. Mm. Uh, uh, it is such a blessing to address you, to see you in person. I wanted to meet you in Rishikesh ah. last three years back, but ah. because of some infection, I could not come. That's so right. I was very much looking forward to meet you today. If I would have not met you in person, I don't know how I would have liked it, because uh, uh, grace has brought me here in front of you yes. today. Yes. Thank you. Baba, I am from uh, right now at Lucknow. You're in Lucknow? That's right. Yes. Ah. Yes. Ah. And uh, I've been uh, pursuing, uh, my life has been through hell from the last 30, 40 years. But one day I found myself in, in my master's lab, Osho. Mm-hmm. And from there I started my inner spiritual journey 13 yeah. years back. Right. And I've been pursuing you and Eckhart mm-hmm. and Osho. 
my uh, humble request to you would be uh, moji baba that this life we know what we are living in mind but as you have transcended mind and you are in content less awareness what is the taste of life are once a person enters this phase yeah this could give me little uh, excitement and insight to continue with my journey towards no ah see ah okay you want to know what what the life is like once one as uh, not only come to a realization of what uh, what the self is what one's uh, true nature is beyond yes. a, a conceptual clarity beyond that yes. it, uh, experiential uh, realization no or mm-hmm. maybe after what, like what we call as enlightenment mm-hmm. people okay. the our, our master and you have now uh, in that uh, in, you have been enlightened so what is the life after enlightened I, enlightenment till such time one is in his body mm Mm, what's life like? Mm. Life is more an internal experience. Of course, uh, uh, it's a good question. Let me try and find the best way of answering that. Because, of course, in, in realizing one's true nature and being more and more established, because, as you may have heard, it's not just a bang on the head and suddenly everything is gone. It might take several bangs, big and little bangs, you can say. No, yes. but what I mean by that is that somehow uh, we also, through, for instance, the exercise of the invitation. I don't know if you've if you've tried this. Have you have you uh, done the invitation to freedom? Uh, I've been to a lot of meditations. No, no, uh, no, no. Have you? um followed my um uh, guidance in the invitation to freedom yes munji baba I, every day uh, i one hour one and a half hours i spend in the morning just listening to your guidance on meditations no no and this uh, specific one called the invitation to freedom there's a specific guidance hmm? okay. a specific guidance if you have not done that i would like that you listen to that and we may come to that also here because it's not long it's it's profoundly practical and so that uh, that would be the best answer to your question is to guide you into that direct experience and confirmation for yourself because yes. any number of uh, awakened beings and the testimonies of them have not necessarily gone very deeply into the very heart of uh, uh, many beings we may read and say oh so that's what happens and the life is like this oh that's really good but uh, the whole purpose of sharing such uh, accounts is to invite the the seeker into that direct experience themselves and it's not an experience like other experiences that merely come and go all experiences come and go they appear and they disappear whatever you perceive you may call it life in all of its diverse manifestation and aspects you perceive them this way or that way they arise and feel a particular way within you and then they depart so what happened is what is the difference between say that being so for the regular man also because what i'm saying is true for every person it's just that we have not thought about it whatever images memories experiences arise within you within your uh, experiencing field they come and go and i often use example a metaphor like uh, the clouds passing in the unchanging expanse of what you may call the sky and i liken the clouds to be like thoughts and feelings, memory, ideas, attachments, um, identity also is a mighty cloud. We'll, we'll come to that. And that all of these are floating by and are perceived to be um, arising, playing, 
departing, that in which they are perceived and which perceive them, that is stable and unchanging. And that is the fundamental nature of every human being. Let's start with human being. Okay? So I need to clarify so we understand that we are on the same page of understanding when I say that. When one comes even to and through following the invitation, uh, brings uh, your attention if you are if you are if you are earnestly uh, following, uh, then you will come to that ah, that seeing will be very much one with you. It will not be something you have. But it, it, it leaves you in the place of that fundamental seeing, where seeing and being, where knowing and being are one. Thereafter, it becomes clear that whatever appears, disappears, including the various forms that the ego identity take, is also becomes visible and phenomenal to this seeing place, which is formless. Okay, now, if you have come to that seeing, and and I I would, I'm happy that you ask, because I don't have to answer you with theoretical answers. I can invite you into the discovery of that. You see, and I feel that uh, as many people as are interested ought to try listening to that exercise and participate in it, uh, with the intention to take as much. To, to see as much as it offers to you. And I would deeply recommend that to you, that you, you follow that. And thereafter, because within that very experiencing and verification, within that, and it won't take long also, this is why I'm so happy to impart that to you, that you come to that direct, direct experiencing for yourself. And thereafter, you will see that the world did not disappear like bang. The senses are not needed anymore. Uh, uh, the mind is not needed anymore. It is not going to be like that. Uh, you will see that the f- senses are functioning. What really has changed you is what will happen. What really has changed then is that you were previously experiencing on the basis of personhood. And that is a that's also a mode of consciousness, but it is a very contracted and limited mode of consciousness. When you come into the wider realization of the self, you are seeing in a very different way. I don't want to describe that because at that point I prefer to listen to you. What is your seeing? Thereafter, thereafter, because some people go, yes, that's it, I've got it, and I say, Mm-mm, watch out. You who have got it, you see, because even here, the sense of the personal self is participating, as it were. Even though you say, "I can see now that my person also is a cloud," so far in my life, undetected as being phenomenal, because I have been embracing my personal self as the fact of who I am, and in this seeing, it becomes the fiction. The fiction, not the fact of who I am, you see, and that's going to make a tremendous uh, change and impact upon your seeing. After this, uh, one will somehow be so inspired. You can use this word for now, that you are mm, fascinated. Fascinated. I don't even want to say fascinated now because we jump over all of that. You're simply in your natural place. And there's a natural attraction to continue to look, because the mind and the personal sense of self will not just drop away instantly. It will come to check in. And it's not bad that it comes, so that you will keep on having to exercise your discernment to, 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 to not somehow get pulled back into the, into the form of the personal self. So that may take some time, and this is why I say it takes time to recognize and stabilize in the timeless. And uh, it's good news because everything that you perceive is time bound, which means that even if you found something, the most exquisite discovery, 
um, it will not stay with you, because it will be perceived to be other than you. What we are ultimately searching for, if you, you say you wish to discover your true nature, is that which is inseparable, indivisible, um, imperishable. And that human beings come to know that such a thing is possible, even as an idea at first, and as they explore more deeply, if they are fortunate enough to find someone who can guide them into the direct experience, they come to that verification for themselves. Nobody can verify for you, but they can assist you into that seeing. And that is what is possible here in satsang. So rather than say what it's like and so on, this is just mind food, you see. Say, so yes, after this, then it's like this and like that. And then my aha, very good. Muji Baba said this and no, I prefer that our interaction, our encounter is deeply practical. So that in that you uh, you come first of all to that profound recognition. If I may say something uh, for everyone here, because I like to respond in a way so that everyone can um, somehow benefit from it. Uh, I'm not answering merely a person's question, but I'm uh, responding to the presence and remind you of the presence, which is a stage that you must come to. If we are listening merely on the basis of personhood, um, whatever I share with you will not last, because the person itself who would get that response itself is not consistent. You see, I've said a lot of things, and if you if you catch me, you see that I'm actually uh, shrinking down to a certain point. What we may make a hundred steps of uh, personal evolution, growing and growing, growing a hundred steps in our journey of ev- evolving. But if you retain the sense of personhood, all your victories are still within the realm of personhood. What I'm speaking is about that in which person and its world is, perce- is perceived as merely fleeting, transient uh, phenomena. You see, I hope my words are not sounding complicated. I know many no, of you no. have been listening, and so far what I've shared with you, it will not be enough. What I'm sharing with you is not enough. You see, you have to be pulled in. Yes. It, it's, it's okay if you are satisfied merely with an intellectual uh, response that feels, ah, wow, this is much better, I like this. But that will not be it, you see. So at some point, at some point, um, uh, in during the course of our time together, um, it will feel appropriate to engage everyone into that guidance, which will be quite short, just to again uh, re-establish the simplicity that the self is, and even the word simplicity is only for the mind, because in itself is not just simple or complicated; it's natural. You see. So uh, I hope you stay with us, and bear with it, and and that um, you will you will somehow come to uh, that recognition along with us. Many people who are open to that uh, um, to that possibility. You see, some I know have, some I know have here in front of me, uh, but uh, to uh, to deepen in or to stabilize much more um, profoundly. Uh, this today, let's see. At every opportunity, uh, I have uh, it is for this purpose. Okay. Okay. So you you stay with us. Uh, I'll go to someone else for a moment. I have uh, uh, Shweta. Uh, 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 your hand is up. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> We are coming to you here. We got? Okay. Thank you. Shweta. Yeah. Ah. Namaste. Namaste, darling. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Thank Am you. I audible? Yes, yes. I am I'm hearing. 
so Muji, I uh, when I listened to your invitation to the freedom, this was the first session uh, yeah. to it. So most of my questions just fell apart, just like that. Wow. Uh, many many were answered, but still, uh, uh, you know, just to reinforce things within myself, I had this question that you know, um, you had you have uh, shared your experience of uh, enlightenment that you know when you met Papaji. I don't remember it, uh, the sequence. You were in some kind of. Uh, angry or aggressiveness and you went away and you sat in some near some shop and somewhere you know that boom kind of experience happened so somewhere uh, i would want to know that uh, that aggressiveness uh, uh, that desperately that desperateness you know to know that being uh, how uh, how should we, you know, be with it? Like, you know, many a times I feel that aggressiveness is what is uh, um, putting me down. Uh, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, desperateness to see that, uh, to uh, to have that darshan within myself. Um, but, but still, you know, there's so much, so many things which is hanging around, like jealousy, hatred, all these qualities. I see yes. them as a weakness. Yeah, they they don't matter about that. As a matter of fact, you know, um, when when you speak about this situation, this 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 kind of reflux of anger that came up, it was totally unexpected. You know, you understand. Yeah, I didn't feel like, oh, listen, I'm an aggressive guy. I thought it was quite shanty, actually. You understand. So it's not like you felt, well, you know, I had all this aggression and Papaji, you know. No, I actually felt uh, that um, at the time I actually felt I was pretty accomplished in my own seeing. So I, I, I was not expecting, you know, th- when that uh, come came up, I was as much surprised. I don't think Papaji was surprised, though. You see. Oh. So it's 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 some uh, reflex that happened when. Uh, something gets caught in the headlights of the Master's grace. You see? Not expected. Uh, so you may be feeling, yes, I just want to clear up a few points. You know, you're moving, yes, cutting sound, then whack! It may happen like that. It may not happen like that. I don't want to put a prescription for, you know, how it will happen. You see? Uh, it's actually, you must remember that what you are discovering is what you are fundamentally. It's your essential nature. It's not going to be something that you create or the Master is going to give to you. It, uh, a teacher, an awakened being, can only remove the seeming obstacle. And I say seeming obstacle, mm-hmm. because our, our life, even our self, is a seeming event. It's not when you come to the Realization, of your true nature, and I don't want to put these words up in capital letters, like you know, wow, because the mind loves that, you know, it's like wow, the big seeing and so on. Um, it's more to do with uh, a sort of timing, maybe. Uh, we cannot say it takes this and this and that, and I don't want to burden you with all of that. All of you, all of you, uh, are already the self. It's a question of being aware of it. I say this because sometimes the mind goes on to some adventure of, you know, wow, you know, yes, I want to do that, and I've had this experience before, and I want to see lights, and all. I say, just forget about all of that, all of that, because it will just become another kind of distraction. Uh, when I, what I call the self, is your fundamental nature as pure impersonal awareness. Now, these words are not attractive to the mind or to the person. It l- deeply loves and is attached to things personal. The impersonal, it only turns to when it's in real trouble, when it's running out of moves, because it, it closes a gate when you say impersonal and it's formless. You know, it's not, not attractive to the person or to the mind, you see, because you think, wow, that's kind of like being nothing and so on. Which again is a concept about the truth. It's not the truth. Actually, you in your completeness, is, it's indescribable, indescribable. And I not want to say fantastic and brilliant. I don't want to use these words. 
simply profoundly natural and uh, somehow uh, uh, some twist in uh, the perspective of looking uh, reveals not something in front of you not something in front of you not even something behind you um, the whole the whole superstructure of somethingness somehow just jerks into the right perspective somehow and even you see i don't want to speak so much about it because mind is listening mind is listening uh, uh, and taking notes but it's not going to help the mind in this way you see and mind is not the is not the enemy of seeing it is not it is part or it is part of the total the totality of what is so this is why i prefer not to speak about it because when we speak about something the mind goes into some groove about it you see so all these questions that it wants to put really in the seeing they are totally irrelevant doesn't matter what kind of person you think you were before you are none of those things actually uh, however however mm, in the in the recognition and the realization i don't even want to say that if you were a bad person you did bad things it exempts you from the possibility not at all your openness is the most important the openness is the most important and sometimes i tell you you don't even know if you're open and some people will say you know i i don't know how to be open i said don't worry about it uh, that is what's so good uh, for me in sharing satsang I am not putting any conditions in front of you to say, "Oh, listen, you know, you better come. Oh, you must dress in white or something, or you must, you know, you know, you must be able to this or that." I don't want to put it because that would really be false. Yourself, even right now, as we are speaking, that which you are will never be out of place, and everything else that you perceive, your thoughts and feelings, projections and desires. All of these are as ephemeral as the clouds that you see above you passing. You see, and you are the one who is witnessing all of these things, but you have not yet placed yourself in that in that obvious. Uh, I say obvious, but it's only going to be obvious when it becomes obvious, and this is the whole point of satsang, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I really feel that um, uh, my time together before coming here this morning. I actually sat with this, and I say, uh, may this be this day, this opportunity of being together with these beautiful beings in the world, be the most profound. And profound cannot be, you know, conceptually profound. It has to be experientially profound. And that is my, uh, that's my uh, intention with you. And uh, hmm, um, if I, and would. Um, so when you when you said that you know Papaji was not surprised and it, and you were already accomplished in a certain way. No, no, uh, I believed I was. I didn't say I was. I say in my own mind. We believe many things in our own mind. You see, sometimes you feel you know what I've got it. You know, I know what it's about. Sometimes I found some people have come to where I'm living. They have really tried hard. I really want to come and come. Then they come. I had one case. One woman came. She came uh, uh, last night. This morning, she was leaving. She's leaving. She said, "Oh, I, I, I've got what it's all about. Oh, I got it. You know, I don't need to stay here." You see, would I believe her? Not at all. What happened is unexpectedly, a lot of resistance came up, because we don't know how much resistance energy um, is playing inside, because you're so accustomed to the, the, your way of thinking of yourself. You don't notice it, and most of us are totally blind, both to what we are, and to what we believe we are, and what is what is happening, uh, the energies uh, that are influencing your behavior and your way of perceiving. You see, but in our minds we think, no, no, I've been there, done that, you know. So this one example I gave of somebody who came here. She came in the evening. The next day she was leaving, packing to go. Come a long way from Germany. It was Germany not so far, but I mean, you know, but came here and said, "No, no, I don't need to to, to be here because I I kind of I've got what it's all about." She didn't give me enough time to ask her what is it all about. She just had to whoa. She was out of here, 
And I recognize that because it's the same kind of energy and resistance that came up within my own being uh, in front of Papaji. I was not expecting that. Uh, so whatever you're expecting, it's not going to be like that. Okay. As a matter of fact, I can broadly expand my example. Whatever you are expecting in life, it's never going to be like that. How will I hold back that restlessness to be there? Restlessness, if it is identified properly, you will see it does not belong to your your place as consciousness. It belongs with the sense of the person you take yourself to be. Once you see this, rather than trying to get the person to control restlessness, you will include them. You would include them together as one package deal, observable in the consciousness field, which itself is not um, suffering these these kind of. Uh, Things you see. I'm I'm just wondering if if, if I uh, because you know I don't like talking about. I don't like to, I get very tired quickly if I talk about because I know where it's going. It goes straight straight into into mind department. You see. And nobody can give you any technique and how to do this and big fat book on how to do enlightenment. It will not help you. It will not help you. Sometimes it will even make your, your path more complex sounding. What are we trying to discover? What are you trying to discover? Even the one who is trying to discover something, it's a bit of a bait. It's a bait, you know. Because in the process of discovering, that one gets exchanged, not changed, become exchanged for the real self. It's a bit of a paradox there. You see, I can't explain that. Can't explain that. Can we run through it right now? I was, I was thinking maybe it's a bit early, but we only have two satsangs. I mean, we better get straight in. Hmm? Thank you so much. Yes, yes, you know, uh, because uh, this question you have put uh, now, and uh, I would say um, we can we can go. If it's not too early, we can take a little look. It's a simple exercise. Simple exercise. I know if everybody's on board, many of you have already participated in in that. It's not a trick. It's a simple opening uh, to to the seeing that is the most natural but unrecognized. Um, within our own being. So I know, uh, uh, while looking through the faces I have in front of me, uh, that uh, a, n- a good number of you have uh, been making use of the invitation, which is merely like a mirror. You know, it's like a mirror that is reflecting what you are already. It's not that you're going to go into this magic mirror and get something. It's simply reflecting that which is timeless within you, you see? And um, yes. So let's, let's put it this way. For those of you who have been uh, using the inquiry, and for those who perhaps uh, are new to it, but the, the result, if you are earnestly present, will be the same, as a matter of fact. They are not really grades of awakening. Uh, what happens is that when we come to that seeing, it's just some become much more deeply established in it, because they persist, because the mind expect that the mind will keep rocking in and out. But the amazing thing is that this rocking, if you don't identify with it, becomes also something very perceivable and separate from your place of seeing. And it's the place of seeing that is the most important. This is your way a home. You see? So, um, uh, the man who I was talking with also before, I don't remember his name. Huh? It's Gotam, Gotam, of course. How can I forget Gotam? Unless he's only in the mind. So, Gotam also, you. Um, you also let's see if we can we can look together now also no we can do that 
along with Sweta. Along with Sweta. Okay. Um, so it's uh, so so simple, so simple. Before we can get into um, into that place of a deeper recognition, I will just ask you uh, to cooperate and, and to what I'm asking is very very simple. Simple guidance, uh, after which uh, the simple guidance is only to empty, to empty the the beingness as it were, the mind and beingness, and very very simple. To empty it, uh, I'm going to show you how. And after that, when you're empty, uh, I can just ask you some simple questions, so that you can you you can be looking from your right place. Okay. Now I'm going to take it just on. On the basis of the two of you of a come and ask, already your approach has been you want to find out. You want to find out. And if you are not merely wanting to find out as a mental as a mental conviction, but as an experiential uh, revelation in you, um, then uh, we can uh, take a look. And I am I'm looking to the side of my screen, I see all these yellow hands for a moment. So all the yellow hands, the people behind the yellow hands for a moment, I'll just say uh, to really make the best use of this opportunity, I'm going to ask you to to um, to to just leave your questions alone because there's something very very um, intrusive uh, about holding something and an intention in your mind. Because anything that you hold, you say, "Okay, I must have a question. I want to ask Muji today." So then, in the meantime, whatever I'm saying. I can't get your full attention because you don't want to forget your question. You see, so just for a moment, if your question is true, then it may survive the inquiry with me, or it may survive simply because it has been an obstacle to your deep listening, and you prioritize the importance of your personal questions, which I'm asking you not to do. If you're really going to make the best use of this simple exercise. I will ask you simply to leave uh, your. Uh, it, it will come up in my question, and let's begin right there. I'm going to ask you first of all simply <clears throat> to um, to just uh, leave aside whatever it is to do with past the memory and so on about past and so on. So anything that come up in memory about the past and so on, you, you're not going to need this. You will not need this anyway if you are searching for freedom for a moment. You don't need any data from the past. That's what I mean. I'm not saying that you have to go and throw it away somewhere. All I'm asking is that for, this, for the short duration of this time that we have now together, that you, that you just leave those things uh, for the moment aside. When we are finished, you can pick them up again. So we are not uh, doing any, any brutal work. Just saying uh, some very simple thing that is achievable for everyone. So whatever is belonging to past, including up to the very last sentence, last moment, last day, whatever, just leave that aside for now. And you can do it, you see. It's not difficult. You're, it's the power of your intention and your attention. So everything of past, just leave it. So as anything such as what you have done in your life, how much meditation you have done, where you have travelled to, how many books you have read, how many masters you have seen, you know, who you take yourself to be, just leave these aside for now. Be empty of them. You know. We don't need to do full concentration about that. They just say, I have your attention. I just need to have your attention for a moment. So everything of the past. Okay? And then on the other side, everything to do with the future, like your mm, your desires, your aspiration, what you'd like to be, or how you love to see the world, what you wish for, like this. So all those thoughts to do with what you intend, what you'd like to become, including even enlightenment. Okay, I say it again, including even enlightenment. So any desire from small to the biggest for a moment, empty the mind of them just for this short time. And as I said before, 
at the end of the exercise, of course you can go back. You see? So leave them aside for now. Simple enough. Again, anything of past, memories, things that have happened to you, good or bad, all these things, anything about your identity, who you take yourself to be, and all of these things, uh, your record, your history, your biography, just leave aside for now. Just empty the mind of that for a moment, because I'll, you will need to do this for the moment with me. And anything to do with the future, your intentions, your aspirations or goals, all your dreams, and so on, just for the moment, just to leave that aside for now. Then we come to present moment. Present moment. So even in the present moment, okay, whatever might be present with you, like okay, where are we going? Where are we going with this and stuff like this? That also don't engage. Like okay, what are we going to get out of this exercise? What is Muji guiding me to do? So don't engage with any thought whatsoever or memory or drift off in feelings because it's been such a habit, you see. Okay? Now, even to come so far as to follow my words inside your heart and to say yes, from the past, okay, leave that. I won't talk to Muji today about what has happened to me in the past and how I came on my journey. I don't want to know. It's not important. And in the future such as, you know, I hope to really um, wake up so that I can become a teacher or I can, my children, my family will improve. So all your intentions, even the most noble of intentions, just leave aside for now. And all can do this, I know. All can do it. Leave that aside. And even the present moment, any anticipation, any expectation, such as yes, you know, I really, uh, I'm, I'm really present. What's next? What's next? Leave everything. So really empty, you see. And as you do this already, already this is tremendous, if you're able to. And I'm not asking you to do something now for a very long time. Just for the duration of this time that I have you here in front of me, leave all your mental intentions memory, ideas of self, of the world, everything, the news, the blues, everything, just leave everything alone. So, like that. That is already wonderful for me. Now, if everything, if you could imagine that everything that was contained within your consciousness, in your being, or mind, or identity, if everything could be taken out one by one like this, or in heaps taken out, everything that is perceivable, every event was taken out now, there will remain here whatever that is that remains that cannot be taken out, cannot be removed. You are with me. Everything to do with that you could put down in writing or tell by your mouth or with memory, we are leaving that aside. I am already very pleased that you are able to do that, and you are able to do it, of the past, of future, and even in the present, not holding any shape or any intention, the highest of which would be, I want to be awake, and so on. So, no identity also. Leave that aside for now. And you see, somehow, you are still very, very much present. I can't take out the sense of presence. You are here. Something is here, without past or future, or concerns about the present. Okay. All these have been left aside. Now, you see, There is not a black hole. This is the first thing you come to see. If I have removed past and future and present, then 
that must only have now black hole. Black hole. I say no, black hole is also something perceivable. You can see that any kind of black hole is also not what's here. You see? Now I want to having come to this point with you, I just want to check in with you on something. So I'm just going to ask some simple questions, and you yourself must respond uh, yes or no. So we're not going to talk. We're not going to have a debate. We just want to check in with you. If you have followed me so far, just want to check in. Whatever remains that you have left past and future and present, whatever remain, whatever is here by itself, is it being supported by anything at all? Whatever it is, we're not going to put a name to it. Sometimes I just call it the what is. Whatever is here. Hmm? Did you create this? You're simply here. You're simply aware. Whatever it is that's here. Hmm? Is it an object of any sort? No. It's not an object. So therefore, it, it has no shape. Does it have any size? Just what is here? Does it have any size at all? Does it have any, any limits or boundaries beyond which it does not exist anymore? I have to check in with you, you see, to see if you are really present with me. See? Yeah. You don't have to speak. You just have to be following. Okay? Whatever is here, okay? I ask you if it is an object. You say it's not an object. I ask you, does it have any limitations, any boundaries beyond which it does not exist? I'm watching your head. You can simply shake your head or nod if you want. You say, there's no boundaries to it. There's no boundaries to it. Is it is it uh, merely uh, is it a mood that you are experiencing or a feeling? Is it a mood or a feeling? No, it's not the mood. Not the mood. May I ask you? Can it come and go? Just stay as you are. Don't create. Don't imagine. You're pure looking, pure seeing. Did it arrive? And can it depart? That which you are aware of now. No. No, it cannot. May I ask you, can it Fade. That which you are aware of. Look. Hmm? It's not an object. It has no size. It has no limits. Hmm? Can it fade? So that at the end of this exercise you say, Oh Muji, it's not here anymore, it's gone away. Or if you had to travel from one place to another place, you say, it was really strong in India, but now that I am in Mexico, it is not here anymore. Can it be anything like that? No. It cannot. Okay. Very good so far. Very good. May I ask you, that which you are aware of, that whatever is here, whatever is here, can it become sick or Depressed in any way. I'll give you a few moments with this. Can it be sick or depressed? You see. 
See, already I see that you are very present, because you have to be present with this, you see. Somehow you are here. In this space, in this space, whatever, uh, of perceiving, hmm, I ask you, uh, can it be sick? Can it get depressed? You say, no, it cannot be. And don't drift away. Don't be imagining, because you have already said there is no image to it. Okay? Can it belong to one group of people and not to another group? Is it exclusive in one way, or is it unbound? Yes. Is there any fear or judgment in it? You see, I can ask you these questions now, yeah? and you are, don't have to take time to think. It's not. It, can it be produced by thought? Can it be affected by thought? I am looking for you, for your verification, you see. Can it be affected by thought? No. no. You have already said, it is not a mood, it is not a shape. Does it have any weight? Does it have any weight? No. Was it born? Or created? Look what kind of questions I'm asking you. I don't think the scientists can answer this question. I'm asking you directly now. Hmm? Did you create it? Was it created? Was it born? And can it die or come to an end? Stay with it where stay where you are, see. Can it come to an end? No. Cannot come to an end. Can can the mind exist outside of it? Can the play of mind and thought exist independent of it? Can it exist at all without it? May I ask you, if it is possible, I can say like this, um, are you in a state of hypnosis at the moment? No. Clear, sober, seeing. Does it have any opinions or preferences? Does it have any judgments? No. Is it particularly religious or political or any of these type of modes of Ways? No. May I ask you how apart is there any distance, such as a distance between whatever this is and yourself? How how will you get there? Is it some place you can get to or separate from? Is it being perceived through some vision? Are you imagining something? Are you creating anything at all?
is it personal? Then I think I asked you before, was it born? I asked you, can it die or end? Are these outrageous questions to be asking a regular human being? How can they know such thing? So, let's just recap. You see? Uh, I ask you, is it an object? You say, no, it's not an object. Not an object. I say, is it a mood or a feeling? I say, no, it's not mood. Not, not, not feeling. I ask, is it? How big is it? Is it? Is it uh, so big? And it has a boundary beyond which it 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 ends. It's no more. You say no. It's not. It's not like that. I ask you, can it be sick or depressed? You say no. It cannot be sick or depressed. I said, did it have a beginning? Was it born? Can it die? You say, no, no, it cannot. It wasn't born. It didn't have a start. Can it end? No, no, not like that. Then I ask, what else I ask? Hmm? I said to you, uh, can it fade? Fade? Is it like a nice feeling now? And then I go walking, I meet someone, and it's gone. It's gone. And if it's if it's gone, where can it go? You said before, it's infinite. It has no limits. Can it fade? Hmm. Can it be lost? Can it be lost? Nobody has ever asked you these kind of questions, nor have you put them to yourself. Can it be lost? You see, no, it cannot be lost. Does it judge? Does it say these people are oh, they don't deserve me and this one? Does it have any opinions? Then I ask you what? What does it take to get to it? How much distance between you and it? Is there any such thing? You say no, no. There's no, no. There's no distance. Is there anywhere where it is not? Do you need some time to go and research it? So if if your responses are as I'm seeing you indicate that it's not something that you can touch or it's not a shape, it's not a mood, it's not a feeling, it was not born, it cannot die. I ask you, how old is it? Is there some place where it is weak and another place it is strong? And then I ask you, what must you do to to reach it? Is it to the left or to the right? or Are you near it or far? You say, none of those things. So therefore, I can summarize that if all these things are as you say, what you are directly experiencing is yourself, what I call the self. It's not an object. Is it male or female?
what you are in direct experience of is the Self. It's not apart from you, therefore it is your non-dual reality. It is self-aware. Can it be lost? Can it be owned? Does it need something to look after it? Can it suffer? So this, this, I point, this is your true nature. Does it have a reputation? Specific race? Is it a belief system? So that's it. End of exercise. Try to throw it away. Try to not be aware of it. This is your true place of experiencing. The rest is uh, the play of mind, uh, the sky, the clouds, the passing show of this and thatness is perceived through the body, body mind dancing. Personal identity also is perceived here. Can that impact upon this? Can it distort this? To whom does this belong? Who is the owner of this? From here you can see, whatever it is that appears within the mind, or the body, or the world, is instantly perceived, and does not, it does not suffer from any impact of any feeling or thought itself. Then I ask you, is it dead? Is it dead? Can you even put it in the category of dead or alive? Even it's beyond all interrelated opposites, and yet ever present, ever present, constant, effortless, pure, indivisible. Unending, beyond all qualities, is it personal? And where are the responses to these coming from? What is it that is responding to these questions? Is that apart from it? So I say, the exercise, invitation to freedom, is finished. Okay. Can this finish? 
did the invitation to freedom give you this? Or simply reveal uh, this as the ever-present constant? Is it a disappointing discovery? Can it be described as having this form or that form, all these things that appear in the space of consciousness, appearing, disappearing, coming and going, and perceived to be coming and going? What do they do to this? Is it boring? Pay attention. Is it boring? Disappointing? Oh my God! Is this what it's all about? Now you are at peace. Are you practicing peace? What technique does it require to be this? And yet, the mind energy will come, the sense of person comes up, and somehow it is as though uh, a personal identity is recreated and plays with uh, time and past and desire and identity and so on, plays out in the presence of this. I gave another simple exercise. Now is a good time to do. If I move my hand like this, I move my hand like this. Huh? Okay. Is my awareness moving about like this? The hand is moving, look. Is my awareness moving about? No. Let's add something. My attention is moving about also. My attention is moving. Is my awareness a moving? So this awareness itself is ever present. It's not moving about. This, if you follow, this is food for everybody. I would like to know of these hands that are up. How relevant are your questions? If you have really paid attention here, what unfinished business? So I'm going to go first of all to um, I see one hand up there still holding hand up there, uh, Sangita. You tell me now what you have to tell me now. Mm-hmm. Baba, thank you. Yes. Uh, how do I stay in this uh, experience okay. forever? Okay. 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 I'll answer this straight away. Yes. And not come out of it. Yes. For anything, I don't want to experience anything. Okay. Nothing okay. Nothing of any. Nothing okay. I want to experience. I just want to remain in that forever and burn this identity completely. No ashes remain. Okay. How are you staying in it now? Uh, right now, I can feel I'm in that, but it happens so that I most of the time uh, in and out of it. Is there a you? Is there a you independent of it? This slow down, slow down. That which is the discovery, 
what is discovering it? Is it something other than itself that is discovering it? That which is discovered uh. now, yes, is a good, 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 good point. Hmm? You ask, how can I, I stay? Can, mm -hmm. I can feel. I can feel everything happens in that, and that is the stage where everything is happening. Yes. But I want to remain in that state forever, permanently. Okay. So uh, at this moment, are you separate from this state? Let's call it. Is two things, is it? Don't go, don't go to your mind too much about this. Uh, it is a very important point. It's a very important point, being made on both sides now. You say you I want to stay in it, and it's a question I understand. I want to stay in it. Don't want to stay in it. You see, so this I that wants to stay in it, the I that wants to stay in it, is different from it. Is true or not? Or is it one with it? Yes. Yes. What? No, I can see there is. I can see there is my identity also. Yes. But there is a. What is seeing identity? Slow down. Slow down. This is food for everybody here. What is perceiving identity? Is not identity also like a cloud floating in this space? Identity, because what we—it's yeah, a strong word. It's a strong word because identity is uh, is what uh, is the it was what was shaped inside this infinite space. You know, somehow it adopted the body as its uh, as its home, and this idea I am I am this person is it seems very natural to us. I am this person. I've been studying. I'm practicing spirituality. You know, I'm doing now. I'm doing this exercise with Muji, and now I see. Ah, now I see it. Yes, I I see it. How can I stay here? So it's a very important question for everybody. How can I stay here? So I ask you, how are you staying here now? By what uh, sadhana are you staying here now? By what exercise are you staying here? Are you you? Uh, you brought me into it right now. I am. I can be there, mm. but I want to be there permanently. I don't want to go out of it. Yes, you being what? I have time. Uh, yeah. That exercise, what we underwent no, just no. now. The, the exercise is the exercise. Yes, exercise, exercise. Okay, it's very. I'm using. I call the exercise like a kind a mirror. I sometimes say it's the mirror of God, like this. No. Okay, you said an exercise has been done, and this exercise has been done by yourself, yourself being. Just try and identify what you mean by yourself yeah. now. Slowly, we can go. The identity of me, my name, my body, my—it yeah. uh, is. I can see it there. It is not gone. It is still there. How do yes. I remove that? Well, um, why don't you just see it rather than try to remove it? Because the minute you try to remove it, you you take on another identity as a remover of that. Why don't you just see the the play of identity, just like the world and everything is appearing in that space? The space itself is not troubled by it, but something has to happen. Is that there needs to be a uh, 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 staying with this seeing, staying with it, is not like you arrived, you know, in 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 uh, uh, in in Delhi. It's not like a place you arrived in. You see, it's not a place that you went to, because I say it is infinite, isn't it? You say, but you, um, the sense of myself, uh, I've been doing this exercise, and what did you find? Is it different from you? You said, no, I, I asked you how much distance to, to get to it. You said, there's no distance. I conclude, well, actually, this must be your own self. Then you say, but how can I stay here? Have you been able to stay in your person constantly? Is your person a constant? I didn't understand. Your, your sense of your person. You say, how can I stay here? You see? 
the one who wants to stay here, is this one constant? No. No. It, it, it keeps changing shape. The, the separate, huh? the separate self, the identity, what I have about myself, yeah. keeps changing. Yes. I can and see the, that. It, uh, yes. What is it that recognizes the changing? Is that changing? No. The inner self is not changing. Yes. So I want is, to stay there forever. So, if you are the inner self or not? I am that, but this identity, the separate self is very torturing. Yeah, it comes, that's good. Okay, comes thank you. So, that separate self is going to keep coming into the picture to... to it's like a function of the of the of the mind as con, uh, as person. It comes in, and when it comes in, it has the power to pull out of truth from the infinite the shape of a personal identity. When that personal identity comes into play, it's as though the the what you are seeing now is veiled. It appears like this, okay, and then you feel, oh, I've lost it. I, you know, I need to do this exercise again. And I'm so separated, and you see, you're speaking again as your mind, and that's fine for the moment, okay. I'm simply asking you, now you can see that that is a play that, that happened, but you are able to see that. Yes or no? That the person's sense comes and the person's sense goes, isn't it? Yes. Can you or not see it? it comes. You can see. I can see that it comes and goes. Yes. That which it sees the coming and the going of the person is that the same as the person or different from person? Different. Yes. And, and what is that? From where are you seeing the person coming in and going? It's from the same place here. That you must honour by looking and saying, wait a second, all that is appearing in me, thoughts and feelings, imagination, all of these are perceived. They come and they go. I cannot be them, including my personality, because if I was anything that I'm perceiving, including my personality, when it changes or goes, I would also go. But I'm here to witness the coming and going of it. What can I be? So this is your practice, you see, to remember, ah, this this illusion keeps happening. This delusion keeps happening, where the 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 old idea of self comes, and it pulls attention, and and somewhere in that moment, identification happens with it strongly, and in the moment of the identification gets fixed, what I am now seems blurred, like it's gone, a seeming. Each time that is recovered, like whoa, but that but that also can be seen. Where are you? In the instant you see, but that's also just a, a kind of a, some kind of dream, something happened. I kind of got hypnotized for a moment, and I believed I'm this again, I'm back into the soup of my person again, and instantly it's recognized, and where are you? Did you travel back yes. to, to <laughs> this? So this you are seeing now, I can see from your smiling, that you're seeing, you're catching yourself, becoming uh, your identity. And that is at the very crux of this exercise, that you will now you have now discovered that which is unchanging. It is not that that is saying, but I keep going back into my person. It's some play of Maya that creates this feeling. Oh yeah, but I'm now all back in my mind, and that will happen for a while. But more and more, as you confirm uh, your your real place. That is called stabilizing in the truth. And as you keep doing this, the, the, the tendency to get pulled into or to become hypnotized uh, by the mind flow will lessen and lessen and lessen. And that is called stabilizing in the self. Thank you. Can you use your grace and uh, help us to overcome this, this fight with the identity? It is at your disposal right now. It is with you. It is self, the grace of God brought us into this exercise of looking and is with you. 
because it is you until you mm-hmm. realize that it is not different from you. This play mm-hmm. of duality mm-hmm. and personhood has been going on for many for a long time, maybe lifetimes. But this life is your auspicious opportunity of waking up. To <laughs> Thank that. you. <laughs> you see? Thank you. But uh, I am happy that you asked the question because then the sense, you know, like you know, being convinced again that the that the mind play is more real. I say no, it is persistent, but that is not evidence of its reality. It's only because of the habit of doing that. Now that habit is changing. Let your habit be to check it out, you see. Oh, look, but wait a minute, that is also seen. And from where is it being seen? And don't make make it into a mental exercise. Your seeing is just your seeing. When you look in the mirror, the mirror does not give you um, an opinion. It simply reflects. And in your looking, you're simply seeing. Huh? But, but yes. And in the instant of seeing, the whole thing collapses, you see. The power of it, the influence of it, the delusion, everything collapses in that moment. Okay? Then sometimes the mind goes, How can I stay like this again? And then you pick up that thought and you become the one trying to stay like this again. It's very subtle. But however subtle, it is very cunning also. Yes, but uh, can anything be cunning for the self? Mm. What does cunning mean for this? Yes, you see, it's very cunning when somehow the 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 possibility of going into identity is still alive in you. It's 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 how it plays like that. And then from one moment, a simple twist, like a reflex, and you're back again into the, the forest of personhood and struggling and so on. And again, you're reminded, boom, and again, whoa, what was that? You see, more and more this will come. Don't give up and don't be disappointed. You're waking up. That's why it's called awaking, awakening. Meaning, each time you go into identity, you go to sleep. And we imagine all kinds of things and then that becomes your reality. Whatever we believe becomes our experience. We, you believe it into existence, and it becomes your experience. But now you have the highest place you're looking from. You see? And so the, 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 what I may call the affection for the person, which I'm going to call the affection for the infection, Okay, the infection being the personal identity <laughs> and uh, 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 is being caught I more and more. It. Yeah, catch more and more. You catch it, and as you catch it in the in the instant you catch it, what do you have to do? Answer now. Just watch it without any without any good or bad judgment. Yes, yes. And uh, and 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 how long you're going to keep watching it, watching it, watching it, or are you? You simply clarify this is not true, and then its power is broken. Then it comes again. You know. I, I also, um, you you develop the habit of simply paying attention to yourself. It's not a duality. You may call it self-aware. Of somehow, but when the mind comes, it gives you the opportunity to exercise your discernment. So don't feel. Oh, don't complain. Oh, the mind has come again, because that itself is playing the mind. Just stay with it, you see. It's the most fruitful of exercises. Stay with it. And as you stay with it, you stabilize in your seeing. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Very good. I'm so happy that I. I could attend this meeting today. Thank you. I'm Very thankful good. to everybody who organized this. Yes, yes. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. Thank you. So wonderful. So wonderful. Mm. Uh, who is you, George? Hello. Hi. Hello, sir. Hi. Sir, I wanted to ask. That sir, sir, I feel that 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 feeling of of that uh, of God or uh, slowly, slow down, slow down. I'm not hearing you so well. I'm not hearing you so well. 
you say you have this feeling of what? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, that feeling of presence that you uh, say, yes. sir, that has reached my this layer, sir, like feeling inside my chest. Sir, but there is a problem, sir. sir for the last many days, sir, I, I, I feel like there is a strong uh, physical boundary beyond which that self can't go. Yes. And sir, and the thought, and the thought keep on uh, moving and moving and moving in the same yeah. pattern and the same repetition. Okay. Okay. Let me sir, let me address. Please. Yeah. You have done the exercise just now, didn't you? Yes. Sir. yes. Has it gone away? Yeah. Just a bit, but I feel that there is something still like a boundary beyond which I. The boundary. The boundary is created in the mind. The boundary is created in the mind, uh, because the mind has been your habit to look and it will keep on putting something here and then when you solve it it goes to here and they say yeah get and then goes to here and some something is following it and it is the personal idea you have of yourself and that is 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 interacting with the mind and creating these these doubts and like this because uh, from the place of the self of the pure self hmm, where are there boundaries beyond which it cannot go it's totally irrelevant question when you are in your seeing. Where is it got to go? I ask also, is it limited? Uh, is it restricted? And the general answer is, uh, no, it is not restricted. But maybe your answer was different. I don't know. So, so what you are uh, trying to say is that I should just uh, remain in that... Uh, and not be bothered by what you, you, if you truly, yes, if you truly remain in that state, then you remain as that state. You cannot remain as that st in that state in a dualistic achievement. You follow, because if you say I want to remain in that state, then you still keep an image, a self-image, as something that is doing something to stay in a state, and that duality will persist. But when you come to the exercise, and I would recommend that you listen again to the invitation, it's freely available uh, online, to follow through with it and then see if that question that you're putting now can survive in the climate of that seeing. You see, this question come after when you regain personal identity again. Then this question has come, yes, but there seems to be a boundary beyond which it cannot go. And that question has developed a fascination only in your perspective as a person. You see, it, it, it's, it, it's, not a, it's not like it's a fundamental question. It, it's a question that's coming because of your personal identity. You see, because such thing as some place where it cannot go becomes totally irrelevant in the total seeing. Because without consciousness, I feel without consciousness, I feel that. Yeah, uh, you cannot have any um, act of perceiving. The very functioning of perceiving is impossible without consciousness. In fact, all your life and the life of everyone, everything you see, is only what appears in consciousness itself. You see. And uh, the consciousness in which the world and your own self uh, appears inside that consciousness, that consciousness itself appears also in the waking state. You wake up in the morning, if you wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, at 6.59.59, what was your state? Where was the consciousness? You were not there. When consciousness reappears, Coming almost simultaneously with it, or soon after, is a sense of your personal identity. So it is part of the content and the play of consciousness. Sometimes I call it the theater of consciousness, within which the sense of yourself as a living entity, alongside other living entities in a very diverse world, is all contained in that consciousness itself. 
So whatever you're speaking is some shape taken within the scope of consciousness. Do you follow this? <laughs> and then also the consciousness <laughs> itself appears. Consciousness I'm going to call the sense of being. When you come aware that you exist. You see? First you come aware I exist. And this I exist feeling initially is not a person. It is the beingness. And then later it gets trained into, uh, into becoming a person by identifying with a particular body. A particular kind of, uh, you know, kind of race or something or religion, then it start to take on certain qualities. Then it becomes uh, very individualized, and then it takes on the sense of its own personal autonomy, and the soup thickens because of that. Meaning that the world becomes much more intimate and personal and diverse in that way. But uh, once you get into that state, it's as though you have forgotten your original harmonious state. And you know, even after uh, participating in this exercise of seeing, which takes care of all of it, you know, because it it takes you. You know, earlier I made an example that we can be making lots of improvement, a lot of transcendence, you're growing many steps. You're taking steps, but if at the if if at the end of it, all of them were taken with the identity of personhood. All your achievements remain in the realm of personhood. Whereas what I'm speaking is beyond personhood, in which the entire scope of personhood is perceived, you know, as changeful phenomena, watched from the unchanging. You may all have to listen to this again, this particular point, and slow it down and listen to see that you grasp uh, fully what I'm saying. You see? Um, at a certain point, if you even paid attention to the um, to the invitation and stay with it, stay in the glory of that invitation, you see, these questions would completely dissolve by themselves. You don't have to go and kill any question or kill any doubt. If you stay in the height of your consciousness like this, all these other you know uh, imperfections will autocorrect by themselves. And how wonderful is it? Yes, sir. sir. Sometimes I feel that that space is just behind the mind, and we see the mind. It's not. It's, you can say it is behind the mind, but it's not behind that way. It's behind this way. It's it's beyond. Uh, not that way. It's like the, it's not behind the mind over there. It's behind the mind, meaning that before the mind even appears, mind appears in it and is perceived in it. It is yourself. The word behind is better than, than in front. Uh, but in the end, both words can be thrown out, if you see what I'm speaking. There's nothing behind it, there's nothing in front of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I see the hands are growing again, let me see now. Uh, uh, we have, okay, let me go to Nyagun. Nyagun, I can see you. Namaste, my love. Very good. So, Baba, last uh, couple of uh, months, uh, I'm very happy. I feel like dancing. I feel like getting up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and dancing. And it's not that the, the it's not that there are no issues or no problems. They continue. Yeah. The ups and downs continue. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the bad, bad moods continue. continue. Mm -hmm. But somehow, I'm able, instead of dwelling in in those moods, I'm able to... Uh, something, something moves, moves out, out from, from there faster and is in a better uh, space. Baba. Yes. The, the only thing, thing is, uh, it's, it's right now where I am now. It's as if from this moment onwards, the past doesn't exist. There has been no life. Uh, whatever memories I've had those of my life till now, the memories are fading away. Sometimes I don't remember 
issues i don't remember names i don't remember events and i really start wondering if i'm com- coming down with alzheimer's or dementia yes yes uh, most uh, people who have come to into real seeing will call it uh, uh, shiva's amnesia Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, it's really because uh, when we are in the mode of personhood, um, you know, a person requires a lot of data to sustain itself. Um, uh, irrelevant things also, you know. Yeah. Um, but as you're coming into wholesome seeing, the need to remember and to retain uh, information and data of that type is sieved through. There are some things which you will spontaneously remember, uh, which is in service to the, the activity of the dynamic uh, consciousness, uh, and others will just uh, thin away in their importance. And something just nicely accepts that. Um, uh, it's part of what happens in the, in the, uh, the sort of like the, the shift from person to presence, and then from presence to absoluteness. It's happening very naturally. We're not going anywhere, actually. For the first time, we're not going the the person is on the journey of goings and comings, um, but in the real seeing, because it is infinitely and everywhere constant and present, it's not a sense of going. There's a stillness in that, and it 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 it, it has no need in that kind of way, but in its dynamic expression to the consciousness, that activity will continue. The world and the diversity is also belongs to it. it. It plays like that. But you will come to discern the difference between the field of the changeful and the unchanging. And you will stand in the ground of the unchanging and experience the changeful also. That's why they're, they're, they're feeling less significant, less, um, and ne- less compulsive, um, less hypno- hypnotic, you see, and you say that they are, they are there, they, they appear, but the gravity of them, the 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 mm, the strength of their grip, is loosening. Why? Because uh, you are being more and more confirmed in the place of your stable um, being. You see, it's a natural uh, occurrence. It's as if nothing matters, and that's a very beautiful place to be. It's a good place to be. It's not a good place to speak about to people. <laughs> because they will not understand that, you know. You, you've got to be in the experience to understand that. You see, like sometimes I say, you know, the world does not exist is not a good teaching. It's a great discovery, but it's not a good teaching. It's not for social chit chat, you know. When I say it doesn't <laughs> exist, because people hear it from the mind in a very dismissive way, and it's not dismissive in a cynical way. It just means that what was taken to be so profoundly true is seen to be much more um, uh, insignificant at the place of your deeper seeing. And we are doing that in the very, in the very nature of evolution and maturity, is that you are tra- unendingly transcending lower and lower states. Where are we going? We are actually just coming back to rest. Because in, in 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 the ultimate state is you come back to rest. In the in the in the personal state, we're coming towards activity, and uh, trying to juggle all the things that the person that makes up the personal world, and uh, and only when we suffer it actually we we tend to transcend because you get the motive the motivation to come out of the web, uh, you know of uh, or the net of personhood. You see. You know, Paramatman takes care of everything. You know, from the smallest to the biggest thing, the 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 the, the self, God self, is taking care of everything. The more we go into the kind of autonomy, and uh, and uh, of personal identity, the more we we become into this into the forest of confusion. Actually, I would say, we try as much as we can to put order to that climate. It it's very disorderly. And as you are coming more into the unitive seeing, uh, as is, you know, I'm using words now, which a, a little while ago were completely redundant, unnecessary, in the place of the is, in the place of the is, and you see that in the place of the what is, you are not, uh, you are not uh, mm, paralyzed. Activities can move and so on, but they move without dragging a self behind them. They are they are flow a very spontaneous 
uh, outpouring and flowing. And they are grace-filled also. So I say this to remove from the minds of people who tend to feel that they turn the mind into an enemy. Actually, at some point you'll be you'll see the what the what the wisdom of why mind plays because without, uh, like I say, the the mind, the psychological mind, cannot intimidate the true self. It can only intimidate the idea we are holding on to of who we are, which is unstable. Uh, so this is why it was so important to to guide into the place of the supreme being. Uh, you see. And it's not that oh we don't care the mind doesn't exist. It's it's not a cynicism, uh, but more a, 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 a not a, not only a relief also, but a release from all these uh, complexities that happen when we go into personal identity. You see. Mm. The only thing is that uh, when the day starts and the activities of the day start. Uh, mm, there is a feeling that I, uh, uh, I'm not aware of being aware, yes. and then the mind plays the trick that this is uh, this is an indication that I'm not there yet. Yes. So I, I, I well, that's when the mind, the mind that's when the mind gain its loudest voice, like this. You see, um, but even if you step aside for a minute or two, go to the bathroom and center yourself in that seeing again, um, it, it it's fine. You you can do this. You know. Um, uh, and in a way, the mind attacks uh, in the in 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 an authentic seeker. The mind attacks becomes you know sort of like encouragements for self inquiry and for checking in again uh, and to stabilize into your seeing again. You know, and we should not give up. You know, in, in a sense, we have a saying that you know you know like yeah, because you are on your you are in your last life sort of thing. No. And then all the, whatever is left to explode is going to keep exploding now for now. But no, don't make a big deal of it. Um, just keep, just stay in the place of your seeing, and not to, no, close your eyes and cl- shut down your senses. No, be very present. They are not an offense when you are standing in your, in in your oneness. You see, right. and right. more and more you you find that uh, you are able to navigate, so to speak, through the different situations. Because you don't have to procrastinate and project too far. You're just very present. When we use the mind, we tend to speculate and project ahead of ourselves. And you come out of the the synchronicity, the natural harmony field of of that, the self, which is the prevailing power. If you go back to projecting too far, we slip into the mindset. And that cannot guarantee anything at all, apart from more, more instability in some way and whatever your job may be whatever your job may be if you are centered in your seeing it will find a way because there's nothing that exists outside of the jurisdiction of the total self yes. it's, it's like, like magic, magic. Certain, certain things just fall in place and certain yes. very beautiful things start happening and it's just like your sheer magic actually there's nothing that can compare no amount of planning no amount of skill can compare with a life that unfolds spontaneously through grace. And by grace, I mean when you have acknowledged your true place and you are functioning from, or not even you, the functioning is happening and being perceived from your true, your true place. You see, I mean, like you know, as I said again, you cannot put a day together. You cannot plan a day uh, that can compare. With what is unfolding spontaneously in the presence of the awakened mind, or the the true self, it's just joy. God never makes any mistake. He doesn't get anything wrong. The mistakes are in the department of the mind and person. Everything that happens, bitter or sweet, you turn to your advantage. This is the nature of wisdom. You see it as somehow something keeps evolving. Something keeps maturing uh, within a, a background of unchanging awareness. It's a kind of paradox, but you who know it and see it, you see. Uh, yes, it's it's. How can you explain this? As what? As the fruit of your exercise disappeared? As as the fruit of your exercise? I'm looking at everyone. As as the fruit of your seeing. As it uh, thinned out, as it, uh, as I said before, as it faded, 
if we go to the mind, somehow some subtle kind of a kind of nausea comes in and you start to feel, oh no, I think I've lost it and I think I've got to get back. And you see, you came back into your I person. You see? The I person doesn't really exist. We imagine him back into existence. Again, when you look and see, but everything that you are perceiving, everything that comes up in the field of the mind and consciousness is phenomenal and nothing here is stable. Uh, nor is the one who is personal perceiving anything stable. So include that one in the field of the total phenomena. And, and you'll see that it, it, all of this shows up in this space of being. And you don't have to talk about this. Nobody's been asked to produce some thesis about it. You just, uh, just stay in your seeing. Hmm? It is so sublimely uh, natural, you know. But because we are used to efforting, and so used to personal identity, which by itself is is uh, somehow ad- addicted to effort and to projecting situations and trying by effort to make them come true, to fulfil its projection, we are encountering constantly this struggle. And and that's also within the play of consciousness. It's a, we we all go through stages. We are all growing through those stages. You see, growing back to what. To rest. You are coming to rest. The ultimate is not the most complex. Like everything is happening spontaneously out of the out of the the nothingness. These are not words for the mind, by the way. What was good about the exercise in, is in that following it. And and coming to the direct experience, you see, the mind cannot hold its opinions there. It's so totally um, uh, ineffably uh, indefinable. You're not frozen into some into some you know state. Question may ask, how can I get back to that? The very question itself is the problem. But you know, how can I get back? Who is asking this question even? The the question and the one who is the question and the questioner are both the uh, phenomena appearing in the unchanging awareness that you are. Uh, uh, awareness doesn't leave, it cannot go, it doesn't have a part time job, it doesn't have a job, it's always a constant field within which life manifests and is perceived. Something was hiding for many months from you. Yes. There is no need for uh, for that anymore. Yes. Yes. Hiding from me in this sense is a bit hiding from oneself, uh, because uh, I have no separate place to be apart from what you are, from totally. Mm. And that's what makes it uncomfortable, because sometimes when you meet someone, like I did with Papaji, and, and it happens with others as well too, you know, sometimes what uh, some discomfort comes, whatever is hidden comes up. And, uh, and, and, and uh, the part of ourself which is still surviving in personhood don't like that. You know, so it reacts, and then because we are so accustomed to identifying with that state of personhood, we take it as out, that reaction is what you are having yourself. And so you swap your true nature for this, you know, very opinionated uh, identity, like that. It takes time to catch it, you know, because it's been at its game for a long time. But so profound is the seeing, so all-encompassing, and uh, complete, uh, that uh, you you can see why perhaps in the game called life and so on, why the mind, uh, if it was given a character, a characteristic. Is the one that's trying to dis- distract you from discovering the self. And at a certain point, I don't feel feel that it's 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 uh, it's also a part of the self's tool. Also, it's part of its game. Also, not easy to understand. I 
I can I I, I thank you Nagun thank you I I will go to um, uh, we are, we are coming now uh, uh, beyond our scope time scope here let me just ask Michael I see Michael has his hand up and I see what he has to say for me thank you Nagun hope to talk to you soon again Namaste sir Namaste How can we increase earnestness if earnestness is the engine of our Seeking. Yes. How can we increase our earnestness? You know, if you fall in love with someone, you know, do you require anyone to remind you to remember your beloved? When you have tasted the, the fruit of your seeing, it, it, you are automatically encouraged to seek further, even though the mind, by habit, uh, appears to try to play this play of distraction. And so on, and and actually, it's good in life that sometimes we are given certain struggles, because in struggling and and coming out of them, you develop the spiritual muscle that's necessary. Uh, a part of our mind uh, is exp- expressing, like you know, as though we are entitled to this. Yeah, why should it be so difficult? No, no, the ladies. But uh, actually, out of your own endeavor, uh, you grow and you appreciate also. Um, I once came into uh, among some of my uh, uh, students, and I said to them one morning, you know, if I, you know, I, I have a, I have some pills here. If you just take one of these with a glass of orange juice or some milk, you know, in ten minutes you wake up, okay, out of it, into perfect uh, awakening, okay. You can either take one of these tablets, or you can continue with the exercise I've given. And uh, and and uh, and uh, this way you you experience your transcendence. Uh, who is up for the pill? And a few hands went up. Yeah, hey, I want the pill. Uh, please, yeah, yeah, please give two. Also, I can take. They would, of course, a part of the mind would love to have a, you know, uh, the, give it the easy way. Uh, but uh, I felt the exercise, the the this invitation to freedom. Uh, I feel it is uh, it is the easy way. You know, if things come too easy for the mind, you give it no value, actually. And we must value that above all things. And uh, you grow into, uh, into, into valuing it. Because by nature, uh, in the person is very, very rough, you know, and uh, very requiring and, uh, you know, demanding and quick to be dissatisfied and so on. So actually, when you, you know, it's as though, God give, puts a bit of nectar on the tongue, uh, the nectar of your own being, and then you, you, we, we say all the beings there go crazy for this nectar, this amrit. You see, and so as you really um, experience uh, the the completeness of being, you know, you have the darshan of that seeing, then somehow your appetite is whetted, you know, that you 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 want more. But of course, you have to go against the stream of the mind that is that comes up like a, like a roaring lion, you know, to kind of divert your attention, distract. And you, sometimes people experience, you know, since going on the path, things have become. My mind is even worse than before. Uh, yeah, so it gets bad before it gets good. Sometimes you go to hell before you go to heaven. Um, but uh, you know, so much is everything is on your side. You know. We, we sometimes don't realize uh, how much impurities, maybe, you can put in a way, we have imbibed, until you're coming out of that state into a higher state. You can look back and say, Wow, I didn't realize there was so much tension and so much fear within me. You see? So it is a kind of growing, a kind of growth uh, um, of um, uh, deepening in your appreciation. Valuing yourself above uh, the non-self, you know, more and more, and as you go, the more committed you feel, then uh, the greater the, the the boon, you know. It's like that. So when people ask, "How can I increase?" and so and so and so, I say, "Be careful that this question doesn't come just from your mind." And you see, because the mind wants techniques, you know, how can I do this and should I do this and do this, but I don't trust those techniques, you know. I mean, just now we did the exercise of the invitation, and you see what was the strain in that. What was the, you see, 
Yeah. Uh, what, what, where was the earnestness for that? It's already in you. Oh. It's it's in everyone. Uh, you know, to, it's in us to 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 be the, the the fullest we can be of who we truly are. Although we don't know what that is, we just have a sense of it. It's already there, and it only has to be, you know, somehow tickled. And and somehow you taste it, and you know it says in the Bible, taste and see that the Lord is good. It means that you know, as you is not just true being told only. It might start there, but at some point you taste the nectar of your own nature, and then something begins to wake up to that. It it wants more. It wants to be fully this. As um, someone, I think it uh, someone said earlier, I just want. How can I just be this and don't go back to my person? That's a very elevated and a very evolved request and a response to having tasted the fullness of what you are. And isn't it a wonderful news and discovery that you're not discovering something different from what you are? It is it is it's it's a self you're self tasting. Because the mind is like we say, we want to taste the honey, you don't want to be the honey. But in this in this uh, journey of self discovery, you are tasting the honey, and you are the honey also. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you um, for this. Uh, I feel it's been a very fruitful day. I'm, I feel very happy that we, in uh, in in this short time, or so. I feel that we have pretty much covered uh, the ground, and I'm very happy for that because I don't want to give you, you know, seven steps to awakening and you know, thirty-two steps to self-realization. I don't like this because uh, what what is clear is that what we are searching to find is already within ourselves, as Saint Francis of Assisi said. Uh, what you are searching for. Is already where you are searching from. That was first. I heard that. I thought I didn't get it immediately, but I knew there was something to it that was very profound. But when I reflected on it, I saw that's exactly what we are searching for, what we are journeying towards. You know, is where we are journeying from. Before you take the first step to a journey, where you are trying to get to is already where you are. But we are not yet uh, somehow uh, r- r- somehow willing to accept this or able to accept this, and so the journey comes into play, and it's God's journey. You can put like that. So, thank you for your attention and uh, your, your company. The company of presence is the most wonderful company, and uh, love you, love you. Isn't it wonderful that on a single um, encounter or opportunity like this, we are plunged into the the heart of awareness itself? And of course, this is also due to the many of you who have been making use of the invitation and and seeing the fruits of it, that you are the fruit, or you are the practicing, you are the fruit itself, you know. And uh, the taster of it, of the fruit, all one thing. And uh, I want you to. We are going to sit for a few, just a couple of moments together now, and I simply want now again just let go of questions and stuff, and pay attention to what is here now. You don't need any visualization for that. You don't need any imagination, any effort. And this is the power of pure seeing. It's not giving you. Data to remember it takes you completely uh, into uh, your unchanging.
place. We didn't travel anywhere. Simply in, in letting go of all the efforts prescribed and you know subscribed uh, by the mind, uh, one finds oneself simply here. We don't have a pile of information, just washed clean from the the noise of personhood, uh, from the. Poison of personhood, I can say, in a way, and yet at the same time, nothing to curse. You know, maybe the adventure of uh, self-discovery. I don't know what word we can use. I'm actually running out of words uh, about these things. What is really here? You see, did we create something? you nothing to nothing to create nothing to to even change or to become maybe a kind of unbecome i don't know but just in the light of your pure seeing of course from time to time mind will suggest a few things to do and remind you look you're almost there you're almost there like this, and we may purchase this idea, and uh, in in purchasing the idea that you're almost there, you find yourself separated. And uh, I'm not saying this glibly. This is not, uh, you know, um, a statement I want to release to the world because people have to be somehow ready to 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 look with this, to look at this. Sometimes it's important to um, not to keep running away from the mind somehow, but you can listen to what he has to say without logging in. When we log in, and then somehow we are sucked into uh, strongly into the game of duality. Duality is not a bad word. There cannot be any experience without duality. But all that manifests in the, the in the realm of duality is perceivable effortlessly when you're not identified with uh, personhood you can see that and if you don't speak about it too quickly and uh, don't be too much hurry and excited to speak about it then uh, others that you encounter also Mm. May you may transmit something to them in a very graceful way, not always by word of mouth. Because words are many, we can speak on so many things. But to be in the presence of one who is at peace, who is grounded in the heart, is a rarity, a rarity in our time. And I'm not saying anybody should go out to demonstrate any of these things. Don't demonstrate anything at all. Simply be in this, move in this, and you see that it takes care of. You see, when I say life takes care of life, only when you are established again in your original nature, which is here and now, which is here. Ever present. Beyond the concept of here and now, even it simply is the most natural thing. I think our journey in life, this has been the highest, the highest uh, mm, 
evolution of the human uh, consciousness is to awaken to this uh, sublime and uh, the unchanging the unchanging you see i'm using a word unchanging which i said earlier it is not is not attractive to the personal mind because it will not understand words like unchanging and timeless and limitless but your heart know I will just take a minute to sit with you, if I have this privilege. Um, thank you. Shivam Shantam Advaita Manandaropam Shri Guru Shri 
Sakala Brahma.